Same exact process. You guys should get very, very good at this. So again, first step, swap f of x with y. Right? Second step, replace y and x. Okay, now we need to solve. Okay, and again, we need to use inverse operations. You see my y, to isolate it, to get y by itself, it's being squared, but it's also being added by 1. We always undo addition and subtraction first. Huh? Take off what? f of x? Because the, just the first step, just the first step, I said replace f of x with y. Because if you remember, f of x and y are the, they're interchangeable. They really represent the same thing. It's just easier to swap. You don't have to actually replace f of x with y at all. You could keep f of x, but to me, it just gets more confusing. It's much easier to do with y. All right, Haley, flip that over. Flip it over. No, it's your phone. There you go. Perfect. All right, now we need to solve for y. We did these in our focus lesson. We did the square root method, if you guys remember. To undo squaring, you have to take the square root. I'm sorry, you don't have to take, let's introduce the square root. Because when you say introduce the square root, that should trigger something in your brain, which is plus, plus or minus. minus. Whenever we're introducing the square root, we have to include plus or minus. So therefore, I have. Um, plus or minus the square root of x minus 1 is equal to um, that'll be right. is equal to y. And then my last step is I'll replace this and I'll say f inverse of x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x minus 1. Please notice there's a positive and a negative version, right? My input can have two different outputs. My input can have two different outputs. That should trigger you to remember.